Hello folks, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Minecraft Resident Rise. I'm your host Kieran Dave, looking out over spawn with a great frame rate. With a great frame rate! Look at that, 31 frame rates, frames per second uh, at spawn here. I'm fine with that, that's not bad at all. Especially while I'm recording, doubly fine. Anyways folks, like I said in my last episode, today the goal is to clean up um, the remainder of this build. Now, uh, something I thought I, I would mention is that you notice I have a couple extra vacuum, or I guess an extra vacuum hopper in there, pointing there. It turns out that if you have vacuum hoppers in a symmetrical pattern, one, two, three, four, they all pull on things equally. And wow, look at they're fighting in there. <laughs> and when they do um, pull on things equally, wow, there's a light mage in there, huh? Getting Getting torn up, wow. Anyways, when they do pull on things equally, what happens is they all, um, well, it's unfortunate. It creates this swirling vortex of items and thousands and thousands of items were in there just swirling, being pulled around equally by each one of these held in a perfect tension. It's like a vector field with a little saddle in it or whatever you'd like. But yeah, it's pretty funny because I basically almost killed the server. So don't be like Dave. Use an odd number of vacuum hoppers at all time. Anyways, I also put back together this uh, little uh, regulator translocator thingy, uh, which you can see on Echo's videos if you want to really check it out because this is his design. But, uh, huh. Looks like one of these popped out. I don't want this. You know what? I don't want. I don't want arrows at all. Anyways, yeah. So this is this is now cooking things up instead of charging. Um, but the system is pretty efficient. Uh, so as you can see, it does take a little bit of LP over time, but not so much that I'm really worried, right? So no problem. Um, let's go ahead and finish up that build. Now, what have I been doing with this? I've been making it reinforced slates and some imbued slates. Let's grab these. Let's grab these. These and these. You know, let's just put these away for the moment. But we're definitely going to need them soon for our build. Now. Um, the goal of the build today is to take the, the secret that I showed you, well, kind of kind of not so unknown secret, but the basic idea is, is that we're going to use Way of uh, wave Time's teleposers to translocate these altars back and forth and then extract all the delicious life and uh, put it away. So we're going to get it into that altar there. And the entire build's I think going to be right there. We may move it if we need to, but I'll get the gist of it going right there. I think it'll be fast enough for what I have in mind. And I pulled out the old tanks. This will be a great example of what we're going to do. Um, I've also been doing a little bit of spring cleaning of the base, just getting ready with this big area down here. I think another tier four or even tier five altar is going to go down here, off there. I mean, you know, we're just going to cut into the wall. Um, and we've got some other stuff here. I think we're also going to be doing some auto crafting soon, so this is nice room for that. And the nether portal's gone. There's really no need for it with a portal that spawned to the nether. So, um, let's see, what are we going to do first? Well, the first thing is I think we're going to go in here, pull out all of our slates and get them into our AE system. Now, uh, this is cool, I think, because um, we'll be able to craft with them. But also, we're going to need uh, some item ducts. Uh, and I could use the thermal expansion item ducts. You've seen them, though. Uh, what you haven't seen me do is go ahead and um, put together a little whoa, a little bit of uh, the Ender I.O. item ducts. I used them last episode, but didn't really explain how they work. So I'm just going to cook that up. It's pulsating iron. Um, which you'll see one bar of come up pretty fast. And with these upgrades, it comes out reasonably fast. We'll wait a second while that's going on. And in fact, I think I have a little bit extra left over from the last build. So let's do item conduit. Yeah, so let's look at these. Empowered item conduit. This is the good kind. If you make this, this stuff into nuggets, you can use the normal kind. But we want, we want the good stuff, the premium stuff. Yeah. Uh, let's see, is this almost done? We'd like to get at least eight of them. Mm -mm. Right. All right, so we can pull out one of these, and then, ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then we should have la one last one in there. Let's just get it all out of there. Let's just finish up the, there we go, 12. So the goal here um, is let's go in here and pull out our speed runes from our old altar. And so we're actually going to kind of pull back together one of our really old builds. Um, let's see if we can go ahead and place this down over here. So this is the original altar that was part of my original transfer system. And so I thought it'd be fun to kind of resurrect that build with the new rules. Because it, it, I made it and then a bunch of people copied it and like they're all, hey Dave, how come it doesn't work? Well, uh, it doesn't work anymore because uh, Way of Time did not think that my build was sufficiently awesome. And he's decided, for better or for worse, that it has to be awesomer in order for it to work. Uh, that should be good right there. Let's go ahead and, um, yeah. So let's just go, like, ah, oh, it's so hard to move, be so fast. Oh, the burden of being fast. Right. Um, let's just go ahead and break that so you don't ever have to see that ridiculousness ever again. There we go. There we go. Even a noob like me can get out easily. 
Okay, so here's the goal. The goal is first that we are going to take these item conduits and we're going to get them down here. Right? So, uh, yeah, that should work just fine. Now, uh, what I need to do is if you touch these with an open hand, like so, you'll be able to see the interface. Now, the coolest thing about these is these can do both in and out. So they can extract and add from the same side, which is pretty cool. Now, you might be saying, Dave, I don't fully understand why you would be using item conduits when clearly what you want is fluid conduits. Oh, my friend, you don't, you don't understand this right. Let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is maybe trigger just a few times. Let's get some uh, wire. Some red alloy wire from Project Red. Great stuff. And uh, maybe a timer. Is it too soon for a timer? Too soon? Uh, what do we even have here? Oh, wow, we have almost all of it. What do we need? This? No problem. I put together a bunch of this stuff. Yep. There we go. And let's go ahead and grab a uh, switch for now. Or a lever. I only got one of those left. How do I have... <laughs> I have the weirdest stuff in my AE system, basically. I don't understand. Okay. So the goal here is to uh, go like this. Go like this. And then just for now, we'll put this here. And if we go... Then there we go. We've got that cooking away right there. Now, um, naturally, that's not going to work that great because uh, uh, we don't necessarily... Well, you know what? Let's just flip it for a sec. All right, we'll let that we'll let that continue to cook. If that fades away, it's a little bit of blood. We want to fill up the other altar first. So um, what we're actually going to be doing here is doing exactly what you see there. Ah, look, it slipped. That's cool. Um, we are going to be slip switching that over to using buckets. And then we're going to be building a little liquid transposer here to get the stuff out of the buckets and into ME fluid, which I think should be fun. Um, let's go ahead and get the basics of that built. So uh, this should be long enough now. And then um, let's go ahead and make one of these fluid transposers. I think, yeah, I'm naming it right. Do, 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 do. I have all the resources I need. I don't even need to care. Um, need one of these. I will need to make some conduit, I suppose, because, you know, wait, I don't have a bucket in my ME system. How do I not, you know what, stack. There. You happy now? Jeez. Okay. I really don't want you to use that glass. Can I just use regular? This is the most ridiculous part of any eye these days, right? Is that like, it wants to use all my, hey, okay, could I use my most expensive glass? Guys, it's okay to not register everything perfectly. Right. Um... And you know what? Uh, I probably should bring a battery with me just for now. I think I have a hardened... Yeah, I still have this hardened energy cell from earlier. Let's go ahead and charge that up while... Let's just tonk it right here. Yeah, that'll be fine. I didn't really mean to put it there. But, you know, I am the best at block placing, so uh, everything I do is actually intentional. Uh, let's go ahead and put that on there. This should start to fill up at some point. Oh. Um... I'm a little confused, but uh, let's go ahead and make these all blue. There we go. So he'll fill up real fast because we have a fair amount of power on there. Right, um, let's go ahead and put this down. Well, uh, how about right here, right? No problem. And uh, then we'll go like this and like this, right? So now this guy is in out and this guy is in out. So let's just go ahead and set this up like this. Uh, in out. Now, um, the goal here is that we want to remove from this guy empty buckets. Uh, so we'd like to r remove extraction filter, get rid of empty buckets. Now, uh, let's go ahead and we got this. Now, the next thing here is we'd like to also extract from this guy. Well, actually, we'd like to put insertion filter empty buckets, right? That's where this goes. And we're going to turn on sticky modes. Well, we don't really need to, but sticky mode. So. Basically, um, this thing is going to constantly put um, empty buckets in here. Now, let's actually cook up a fresh bucket of life. Bucket of life. Should go pretty fast because um, we have speed runes here. And if it doesn't go fast enough, that's fine. See, that's really fast. That's a thousand millibuckets out of the altar. To do that with displacement runes, we'd need to spend a lot more work. And I don't think we really want to do that right now. At least for this part of it. We will need to use displacement runes elsewhere to get what we want. But right, so the top of this is, uh, top is in fact input. Um, right. So what we'd like to do 
is, and we'd like to, instead of filling it, we'd like to empty it, right? Perfect. And then this will be output here. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's definitely, well, uh, we actually like that to be like that. And um, then we need, this is the, this, that's the red output there for the filled thing. So we'd like to do, I guess this will go like this. We can't actually do this all in one build, which is a little bit too bad. But uh, this is going to be extract only. Hello. Uh, extract. I guess we don't need the in out for this one because we can't. Uh, extraction filter, empty bucket, active without signal. This guy is um, extraction filter is just in. Insert. And he wants a bucket of life, right? Um, and uh, he, it's a whitelist. And we want to match metadata. Are we not? Yeah, we want to match MPT data. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter much. Uh, or dictionary is disabled. And we want to turn on sticky mode. Okay, so what this is going to do is basically yank. Okay, finally, we'd like to we want to insert. And then on the extraction, we'd like to extract buckets of life, right? Cool. Now, the cool thing about this, while we aren't using telepos uh, teleposers, or that, sorry, the tra transposers, is that, um, well, let's just go ahead and, let's go ahead and refill this for a little bit. Anyways, as you can see, the, the, the conduits stay connected, which is great. Um, all right, let's just let this run for, um, <laughs> yeah. There we go, have some more blood here. Let's just go ahead and toss this in. Now, this system will, uh, Let's go to the extraction filter, active without signal. And it should pull it out. I wonder if it's not going to, though, in the SMP. <sighs> um, let's just have it. Hmm. I'm a little bit bummed, folks. I think I must have tested this between versions, and so I'm going to have to switch to a... Uh, I'm definitely going to have to switch to a different build. I was very excited to show you the awesome properties of these uh, conduits. Unfortunately for me, it seems that between builds, that's broken. I'm not sure who I have to talk to, but uh, I don't know if you've seen, but we've been getting a lot of... Um, a lot of help from modders recently at Resident Rise. A lot of really nice folks who are happy to talk to us. So I'm going to have to rever revert to using these, which are, these are the thermal expansion item ducts. They're not bad at all. They're fantastic. I just thought maybe it'd be fun to show you a little something different. Um, still, these can do basically everything we need to do. Uh, one thing that is true, though, is we're going to need to have something slightly fancier. I don't know if you saw me use these before for my mining build. And oh, I could just right click them. I'm just trying to put those right there. Uh, and I could get whatever I wanted, like I could get a filter and stuff like that. Turns out that they decided, perhaps rightfully so, that that's way too powerful. So instead what we're gonna do is take these pneumatic servos. They're exactly the same build that you would use in lots of other things, right? Just pneumatic servo. But if you right click them, it'll say a pneumatic servo has been, a pneumatic servo has been installed, right? And um, we just sort of need one on all the sides here. Actually, we really don't need one on the extraction side. Well, we sort of do, actually. I'm crazy. Uh, right, so now what we can do is we can have one extraction point and one insertion point. So now let's go ahead and do exactly what we were doing before. Uh, and we're going to make it so that this extracts full bucket, buckets of blood. This inserts empty buckets. This inserts like so. It inserts, uh, huh, interesting. Uh, turn that off. It inserts. Uh, full buckets and this extracts well, you know, it probably doesn't have to actually do much of anything does it I may not even need a uh, Yeah, I actually not sure that we need anything at all on this one because I think it'll just auto eject um, So we'll find out in a sec though. We'll just go tick, like that and we'll see how it goes um, Right, so this should just work now. Let's and I have a little bit of a power cell there that I laid out earlier. Let's um, toss this in I guess just we can toss in this, a full bucket, like so. And it'll get extracted in a little bit. Gotta make sure it ignores or low. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be matching. One seven fix seven. Can make it um Oh, this is a blacklist. We want whitelist. And similarly we want uh this to be a whitelist. And that up there to be a whitelist. There we go. As you can see, it's going down here. We want this to be a whitelist. It's going to go down there. 
and into this. Now this system is going to receive the bucket and it's going to char discharge it out into the system. So now we have something that will automatically, pretty cool, right? It's gonna automatically start filling up the system. Now let's make sure that it goes back in here, right? There we go. So now we've got a system to automatically fill this. Now, I, I'm not sure how much it has, but this will move out a thousand buckets a tick. For the price, this can't be much better, right? Uh, there we go, and out it goes, and down. Now, all we have to do is start extracting that stuff, and we just have to put a timer up there. So let's go ahead and put the timer up there as well. Now, one thing that we're gonna do before we put actually uh, change everything here, is we're going to remove all these, okay, so we got some abused slates here, I see, let's just toss them in here, we're good on that. Um, and we're going to go ahead and remove these. Now, as you can see, they actually, uh, that's too bad. The whole system got broken and I guess despawned. Oh, well, well, no, you know what? It probably ended up over there, huh? You know, I could, there's one chest here that's not being collected from. You can see all this junk we get. Uh, I should fix that soon, but pretty amazing how much gunpowder it makes, huh? These ones, of course, they get managed. Uh, I'll fix that later. Um, so, right, that's fine. That's exactly what we want. We'll remove these later. All right. Um, oh, wait. There is one thing we need to do. I get distracted. Uh, okay. Is we just need to put one bucket up here. We always basically want to have one bucket on either side so that the system is kind of can can go through your side. It really doesn't matter. Otherwise, like we're good either way. Um, but this way, the system could always be filling up and ready with a bucket so we can get even higher throughput. And then we'll go ahead and toss this right here. All right. Um, I don't think there's anything in here that we really care about. Uh, you can see it's failing out. It didn't have enough, and so we lose it all. But uh, now it should be no problem for us to go ahead and pulse that. And as you can see, um, we've already moved it over. The bucket should be going down. Yep, bucket's going down. So this bucket here will be like that. And if there's um, not a, uh, a bucket, a place for the bucket to go. We should probably make a little outlet. Um, we could make one with a chest right here. And um, we could put a servo on this. You know, we'll, we'll do this later. We'll worry about the outlet part of it later. There. Uh, because we will need to make an overflow in case there is a bucket. We don't want it bouncing around too much. But yeah, so that's gonna empty out the total thing. Now, all we have to do is take our timer, right? And instead of going from here, we can just go ahead and go from there. Um, we'll need a screwdriver. Oh, you know what? We don't need a screwdriver. Just go like this. And then we'll just add, wow, that's a weird texture issue. Um, hello? Okay, 154 seconds is too much. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, minus 10. A little bit of a slowed update. Let's give each cycle, let's try 30 seconds for now, uh, but that should be plenty. Oh, plus one. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Yeah. As you can see, that'll slowly move. And uh, we should have a bucket at all times. Oh, we got two buckets now. Huh. Whoa, you know, actually, that's kind of cool. We'll have, if we could have a lot of buckets, yeah, that's pretty cool. We should actually have just a ton of buckets in here so that at any given point in time, we're pretty certain that we're moving something out, but that's a lot. That's way cool. All right, why don't we get some of these tanks here in place to catch this overflow while we're working because we do want to make sure that that works. Uh, so here we are, we're extracting regularly. And I think I'm actually going to make it um, maybe a little bit longer than that. That should be, yeah, there we go. That should carry enough to carry us over our overage. As you can see, it's draining that all out. Um, let's go ahead and make this a little bit longer. Let's make it a full minute between runs. That is just gonna slowly drain things out. Fantastic. Now, what I need to do next, and I'm gonna do this off camera really fast, is I'm going to run these, uh, these conduit lines um, for both power and, well, I actually have a plan for the power, but um, I need to run these conduit lines all the way over here so that we can have our ME system available over here because that's what we want to do next, I think. Um, right, so let me get my stuff in order for that, folks, and then we'll I'll be back in a minute and we'll finish up the build. Okay, folks, I'm almost ready to get going. I was just going to go ahead and make a uh, memory 
memory card. Here we are. Uh, this is the last piece I need to get ready for this. Ta-da! So, hold on to your horses. Oh, the second to last piece. I need a kinesis pipe. Now, you'll notice that I have not used Buildcraft at all. Uh, and if you're wondering, why, Dave, why do you need a kinesis pipe? Uh, trust me, I will tell you in just a sec. Um, but I do. I, I have been trying to avoid, as a personal challenge, I've been trying to avoid using Buildcraft. Nothing wrong with Buildcraft. Uh, I've been avoiding using it just because I always use it. I would like to try something different. Anyways, um, here we are. I have run a ME cable and collected two ME point-to-point -point tunnels. Well, and I got one back over here. And I have um, a couple of little things here, including an ME fluid interface. The ME fluid interface is not very expensive, actually, making it a really good choice for getting into the notion of uh, ME. Um, and uh, then we, I've also got a um, uh, these point-to-point -point tunnels and this wooden kinesis pipe. So let me show you the point-to-point -point first, because I haven't used those yet. I actually have never used those in a build. They're really cool, though. So what we're going to do is first pop over here. Um, and we're gonna go, we'll just, we're using a little more cable than we need. Uh, don't worry, I'll get rid of the excess cable soon. Um, cause this stuff, I, it's never easy to just drop down. Okay, come on. There we go. It's never easy to just be like, haha, I'm using cable. Ho, ho, ho. What's my problem? Um, cause it's always precious stuff. Right. So, uh, I'll show you like here, for example, for, in order to, uh, like these ME point to point things can do all sorts of different things, but you have to attune them. So there, if I attune it, it's attuned to build craft power. I'm pretty sure that I can't like attune it to um, redstone energy. I guess I should try that. I just never even thought to. Uh, yeah, I see I can't. Um, that's fine though, uh, because we actually want to use a single piece of conduit anyways, because you cannot, um, let's go ahead and pop it off here. You need, in order to use these uh, build craft power transmitters, you need to use a single piece of redstone conduit to tr tr translate the power. So let's go ahead and just toss this one down here. Uh, no, 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 this one down here. There we go. He does not have any type. So let's go ahead and give him a type of Mind Jewel. Uh, here, let's go like this. There we go. So as you can see, he's now paired. Further, um, this like further this one is also paired. So now all we have to do is run back over to our main power system where our ME is easily set up. Right, it's also all right there and convenient, right? Um, so let's go ahead and step into the back room. Um, let's see, we, you know, we could just put it pretty much anywhere, but let's go ahead and put it right, um, let's go ahead and put it right here for now. You know, we're not, we could, we could save a single piece of cable, but I don't want to fuss with it on camera. So first let's go ahead and um, let it down. Cool, cool. Uh, let's get that, w well, you know, let's get that one piece of cable back at least. There we go. And uh, go ahead and put that there. Pattern it for mind jewel usage. So now uh, once we get it patterned correctly, you can see it connects. That's cool. Now all we have to do is tap it with one of these ME bus memory cards, which you saw me make just a minute ago. You can reuse these. But... Uh, Saved memory card, that's cool. So if I shift right click, that saves that location. And now I can go to any other location and be like, hey, yo, use this. Ta da! Oh, wait. Dope. You do need to use it from the source. I shift clicked because I was being a derp. Okay, say so setting saved and. Right. Site so uh, save loaded. So now that's connected. It's powered. Should be, anyways, right? So uh, no problem there. We could get rid of this. If I were to break this and replace it, no problem. I don't really want to, though, because there's a lot of LP in there, actually. Now, um, what about storing LP? Before we go ahead and chuck down that expensive piece of uh, LP, or expensive uh, piece of hardware, which is the ME fluid interface here, uh, which, like I said, not terribly expensive, um, we do want to make sure that we have a place to store it, because otherwise it's just going to fill up all our fluid cells and... Well, we don't really want that. So I put together a 4K liquid cell, right? And all I need to do is get a single bucket of life, which I should have grabbed earlier, but I didn't. That's okay, though. I'm so fast. Like that. Uh, we'll run over here. Just kind of flip that. So you can actually, this is really cool. Mega did this. This is really neat. I was playing with it earlier. So what you can do is take these fluid cells, just like they were regular cells, toss in a container of the liquid. And let's just call this only life, right? Because this is only for life. Click. 
Okay, so now we've got this 4K fluid, which is, you know, a lot of fluid. Um, it's, it's a huge tank if you were to actually build it. And uh, we would go ahead and toss that in there. So, and we may upgrade this later, but for now, only life goes in there. Ta-da, and then we now have a storage just for life. So when I run back over here and I um, connect the ME fluid system like so, right? Now this guy will start outputting. You can see it's going away and it's going in here. There's really no, you know, rule. Aha, now we're emptying things again. So now, now we are storing things. So let's go ahead and reclaim this extra cable. We just, we could save two of it, save ourselves a little bit of life, a little bit of time. Now we are collecting and extracting ME fluid. And you notice I've tossed a bunch of other buckets in there because it'll just happily stack them all. So we really don't care how many buckets we have in there. In fact, let's get another one. Let's just get in there. Go. There we go. And it'll get stuck in there. And basically the system's just going to travel around and there's going to be a ton of buckets. And if, if we can have up to 10 at a time, and as long as we don't have more than 10, we'll be getting maximum throughput. So this is totally cool, right? And now if we run back over here, we can see that we're already got 13,000 LP in our system and that will just grow forever. So all we have to do is, you know, just go ahead and uh, sort of fix it up. Um, we'll probably put some limiters like we do in the other system, like maybe ME dark cable. I don't know what we'll do. We'll come up with some clever, clever way to limit this. I may change this into a fluid import bus. I think if you go uh, fluid import and then I could do a fluid level emitter. Yeah, fluid import. Uh, precision import, yeah, well, it's not, but we could get this uh, this system working even better, right? For right now, this is great. So this system is incredibly high throughput, incredibly low cost overall, right? We got that thing up there doing all its work, and we don't care about that. Um, and we we don't we only had to run one cable because we've used the awesomeness of applied energistics. Now, um, the last thing I need to do is I need to sit down, and I'm not going to do this on camera, but I'm going to put I'm going to bury in the ground a uh, altar right here because there's no point in having all this stuff if I don't actually make that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the uh, altar. My plan is to basically make all the dislocation runes I can. Or displacement? Is it displace? I always remember. Uh, it must be dislocation. And I'm probably going to add a bit of sacrifice to pad it out. But uh, here we go. Rune of dislocation. You can see it's pretty expensive and it requires these imbued slates. So we can make quite a few of these and we're gonna put all of them on that we possibly can. Because the goal is to make an altar right down here, which is always filling up with fluid. So I'm gonna go, and you, as you can see, we have a power conduit and the ME line right up there. So it'd be really easy for me to run a drop down here with the things that we need. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and build that off camera. And I'm actually gonna make it a T4 altar buried in the ground. So you can't even see most of it. It's gonna be a little bit of an involved build, so I'll be gone for a minute, but for you, through the magic of editing, let's just, uh, let's just look down. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Well, sort of. See, I, I, I realized the putting over there was a bad plan. It's just, these things are really big. So I, I raised the floor up by one. You can see it got a little smaller in here. And uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll probably drop the floor out over there. Um, I just wanna make it look nice. And then down here is a whole freaking thing. Whoa including some holes that I should, uh, you know, probably just patch up. No problem. Um, so now I've just got this thing over here. This is a uh, fluid export bus, which I've patterned with a bucket of life. Um, they're not too expensive, like I said earlier. However, they don't output into thermal expansion conduits, so you kind of got to... Um, you know, you finally kind of got to like be a little bit careful with them. So let's go like this. This should all just work fine. This works fine in the other room. Uh, and what we're just going to do is bring this around like so. Should have just enough to get it done. Okay, that should force it in there. Now all we have to do is right click that and there we go. Our system is now exporting. Um, I think it's 20 mil buckets a tick, I could check. And that's going to start filling into the altar. Now the altar should fill pretty fast. Um, it will take a second for it to, to overcome the, uh, like, yeah, you have to get enough stuff in the, yeah, there we go. It has to have a little bit of back pressure. As you can see, it's a tier four altar with 16,000 LP. And it fills up, that's pretty fast. That's cool. Look at how fast that goes. Wow. You know, I'm going to actually have to up the power 
on uh, this thing because I think this thing is probably going to be the gating factor. So let's go ahead and uh, set it to the next level up. Um, so moving, tw so that's five. Let's see if we can go there. That's 250. Uh, that's way too much. We don't want to use that much. But how about this? 250, 2.5 millibuckets a tick, which is quite a bit. I don't think we can quite run that, but yeah, check that out. Oh, there we go. Free infinite, well, yes, free infinite LP forever. Forever. How awesome is that? So now with this system set up the way it's set up, and you know, I could probably make this cleaner if I wanted to. I think I do too. Um, with that system set up, we now basically have just all the LP. You can see I've got 82,000 LP in my system. Um, and this will fill up forever. There's just no, no stopping it. Um, let's see, if I hop up here, let's see, hop up here and grab this. Hello, buckets. And fall right here. They'll get swapped over in a sec, I'm sure. Whoa, -ho. I have to make that door bigger. You can see I've been doing some substantial remodeling of my house, but now that's just gonna sit there and fill up forever. Now, people who said, hey, why didn't you just uh, leave it in the altar up there. Well, now I can actually build more of these. I can do other stuff with the LP. I can make a dimensional, I can make like a whole like server wide blood network. I could, you know, I should do that. I should just hook up a dimensional transceiver and boom, we're good. Uh, but you can see here that now I have this, I can set up another altar, which I probably will. Um, I'll probably make it down here and set it up. I'm going to set up my AE system to auto craft things from blood magic. That's right. AE Autocraft blood magic. Take that way of time. I've got your number. Uh, but I think that's really all the time we have for this episode, folks. So I hope you have enjoyed this as much as I have, because this is a pretty outrageous build. I feel like I've pretty much gotten away with, with murder. <laughs> I mean, I am in the sense that this is, you know, perpetually killing monsters until the end of time. But uh, beyond that, I feel, let's just toss that in there. I feel like this build gets a, elegantly gets around the problem of, um, trying to deal with alter limitations, right? Um, so we can go ahead and install all sorts of really cool stuff now using basically infinite LP. We have a massive buffer, so even if we, even if for whatever reason the cursed earth stops, we don't have to worry about that at all. As you can see, we're, we're, using, it, we're using it, but we're gaining it. Uh, well, right now we're draining into our LP network, so we will drain it much faster than we make it. But eventually we'll be gaining it as fast as we use it. It's going to be fantastic, folks. And um, with that, if you like what you've seen and you're excited to see the next stage, which is where I'm going to automate, I'm going to build some enemy crafting and a bunch of areas. This is going to become our new factory. Um, if you like what you've seen, please leave a like, a comment, a subscribe, whatever you like. That's done. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it feels really good to click something off there. Folks, I hope that you'll join me next time, uh, and until then, um, talk to me. We'll, we'll, we'll have fun. And uh, make, sure, make sure, if you try the pack, turn on your Forge IRC. Come talk to us in the IRC channel, guys, because we, uh, we love talking to you. We've been seeing a slow but steady rise in the uh, channel there and in the, in the conversation. So I'm really looking forward to talking to more players, and you can come and ask us questions or give us suggestions or talk about the next version of the mod pack, because we're already hard at work on the next version of the mod pack. So folks, see you next time.